Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this is our introductory video on our CNC machine. We have a, a 48 by 96 three-axis machine that initially I wanted to purchase. Well, in fact, I've been wanting the idea of a CNC machine for one for more personal use for 25 years or so. Now we've owned the company or I have owned CNC equipment in the past in the process of manufacturing doors. Uh, there were CNC tools that we owned from a company in California by the name of Caval, very door industry specific sort of machines. There was another multi-axis uh, tool changing uh, router that we had uh, in the past as well. But if you're doing a particular type of work, it's nice to have a tool that's meant for that particular type of work. And the CNC equipment that I've had in the past has been material specific. Well, this is a three axis machine. It's a four by eight machine, as I mentioned. And when you come up with a reason to have one, you come up with a specific purpose. Well, behind me, you can see right there, and I'll show you a little bit more in a moment, is some shelving that's being built. So we're here in 2023. Uh, it's the last quarter of 2023. And in 2024, when you're seeing this video, uh, we are moving into a larger facility. I initially wanted the machine to simply help build the structure of the warehouse of our distribution center. And that was the initial idea of the tool. And the initial idea of the tool was to help cut shelves and cut different pieces of wood that would be not a problem to do it by hand. It would just be time intensive. And the evolution that occurs when you have a new tool, you start to think, well, it does that job really well. I wonder what else I could use it for. And that's the stage that I'm at right now the thinking is changing in terms of what the tool can be used for. So as we go through introducing new videos about the usage of the CNC machine, it's all going to start with just an introduction to what this tool is. So let's talk more about right now what the tool is. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. So the tool that I purchased is from a company by the name of ShopBot. And ShopBot's been in business for probably 25 years, maybe longer. I don't know their company history, but I know for sure probably 30 years. I probably became aware of ShopBot that many years ago. And back then, it was a system where you built your own table out of four by four posts. And what they would have been selling you would be the guide rails and the gantry and the uh, and the router. Uh, a two and a half horse, don't quote me, I don't recall, a two and a half horse porter cable router. And I always thought to myself, boy, that would be a lot of fun as a hobby. Well, as the years continued on, once a year, once every five years, I would check their website and say, oh, boy, they apparently have evolved. They've got additional machines. They've got some desktop machines. And then at one point, it got to a point where I saw, boy, you don't make your tables anymore. Their tables are uh, that they're making tables now. And fast forward to 2023, and I realized moving to the new shop, the new warehouse distribution center, I need help building this place. Let me look up ShopBot. Well, sure enough, they've got a full deployment of tools. And I don't know much about the great world of CNC, except to say that it's as vast as the ocean in terms of options and companies that do it and approaches and the science and forums and discussions and opinions and folks extremely uh, willing to help other people around. And the videos that I've watched just attempting to learn some very introductory basic concepts has been enjoyable, in fact. So again, the tool started out with the idea of helping me build the shop, but the thinking changes when you have new capabilities, a new capacity, and that's what's evolved. An example of that would be, and I'll show you in a moment, an example of that would be a customer ordered a 24-inch by 36-inch fire-rated access panel, something that we have. 
and the fire rate and access panel is, you know, 30 pounds, but it's a two foot by three foot steel structure. Well, shipping that through UPS is asking for trouble. Uh, it's a surface mount unit where there's a steel flange all the way around. And you can just look it up on our website. It's a JL Industries FD or fire door, an FD 2436. Well, that's going to get damaged in UPS. So what I realized that I could easily do is just cut a crate out of scraps, basically. And it's right off camera, but I've got a pile of OSB 716 OSB scrap. So I created a a tool path that just gave me a sheet of OSB that was uh, 27 by 29 by 41. And then, and that just a single sheet. I made two of those, one cover for the backside and then another cover. Well, the thickness of the panel, what I need, plus the packaging is about three and a half inch. So I took additional scrap, and I already have the pro the tool profile for the rectangle. I created an additional tool profile on the inside of that rectangle to where I would cut another profile. So I would cut the inside profile, and then I would cut the outside profile, and all I would have left would be this one inch all the way around trim piece, donut, shim. And I took five or six of these and stacked them all together, glued them. And then I have basically a box, a structure. Uh, and I can, I will show you a couple of pictures of that. I've got the completed box. I've screwed it closed, but the pictures will uh, allow you to do that. So let's actually just look at it now, uh, an example of what I've started using this tool for. If you've not hit subscribe yet, we would very much appreciate if you did. And hopefully you're enjoying this video. Now let's get back to it. Okay, here are some basic images showing the completed box. Um, this isn't completed. These are just the pieces that I had cut and structured together. So here's one of the two lids in the back, and then just five or six, or maybe seven of those trim pieces. Here's another view on it. You can kind of just see what I created there. there there's an edge view of it. And showing the near-finished product is what it is. Now I'll show you a picture of the finished product. So here is the completed box. What I have here is the one lid attached temporarily. The screws aren't all the way seated, but that's what it looks like in profile. The pieces aren't perfectly straight because I'm still learning how to best fixture items and my workpiece moved a little bit during the cutting process, but that's what it is. So when we take that lid open, it's going to it's going to look like what we had just shown you. We'll drop the panel on the inside of it and then bring the, uh, the cover right onto it and secure it and ship it off. So really awesome. Let me show you something else that I uh, have been thinking about using this tool for. If you've made it this far into this video, you must be determined to see it through to the end, and we appreciate your hanging in there with us and watching this entire video. It means a lot. It takes a lot of work to create these videos in the sense that, um, you know, it's time taken away from doing other things. However, the advantage for me personally of creating these videos is the fact that it does allow myself to either learn about something new, to uh, reacquaint myself with something or to reinforce what I believe that I already know. Any comments that you might leave down below would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. So another useful concept is going to be creating custom thresholds. And custom thresholds are interesting because a client will call and say, do you have this? What's the lead time for something? And what we're looking at here is basically a drawing exercise, except take a look at just this part here. So if that looks like a threshold, well, that's kind of what I was going for. It's supposed to look like a threshold. So what we would do would be to simply draw a profile of the threshold from the top and then from the bottom as well. I've got it just, you know, flipped around or, or mirrored 
upside down, so to speak. And the reason for doing that is you'll see, I'm going to put these pieces right back where they were. Okay. What I'm able to do at this point is to create a tool path. And this is our four by eight workspace. Okay. This is our 96X and our 48Y. So drawing the cross section. And what I did first was this is a partial work. Draw the bottom of it. And this tool path here is obviously cutting the outside of the material here. This tool path here is cutting the outside of the material. This tool path here, and I have it, we're only looking at part of the tool path. Let's turn them all off. So now what you can see are just the tool path lines. So let's take a look at the bottom V profile. So I turned on the toolpath of the bottom V profile. So all I want to do is create these serrations, so to speak. And this is just a very initial concept. So the tool that I've, I've told the machine I'm going to use a 90 degree V bit for this at a particular depth. And we can just, you know, simply get an idea of what that depth is. You know, it's about a 16th of an inch. So not very deep. So we're going to take the 48 inch y axis. That makes a 48 inch thresh threshold. So we're going to cut that v groove here and here. And that's the tool path showing where I'll cut the v groove. Now, the bottom pocket that you see here is just this pocket that I'll cut in here. Okay. That shows the bottom pocket tool path. Uh, okay, then we have a perimeter cut that's here to cut cut the tool here. Then we have the top, the ball bit that these these three lines are going to basically give me this ball groove that's here. I think what we did in our sample pieces, we just put a V groove on the top because I don't, I don't at that time didn't have a ball tip, and then a ninety degree chamfer bit up on the top. So to give me this chamfer here, I've got the tool line. Let me show you what this drawing turned out to look like. Regarding the links to ads that you might see in this video, we do apologize for any interruption to a smooth viewing experience. And hopefully the ads that are being presented to you are related to the base product. And if there is something, feel free to click on those and perhaps consider taking a look at what that other advertiser is promoting. Let's get back to the video. So this is what that drawing turned out to look like. If you recall, we put the chamfer on the outside. We profile cut it. Like I said, I didn't have the, the ball bit for the top, so I just cut in a deeper V groove with my 90 degree, um, with my 90 degree, uh, V bit. This is what the bottom looks like. Okay. I don't have the serrations in here because this was just partial. We were doing the pocketing here. So the bottom line is if that looks like a threshold, I hope it does because that's what we're going for. Now, this is just uh, six inch wide, I think. Okay. And sorry, I'm going to grab one more sample piece. And this was a, a second attempt. This is the bottom only. Now, this time I've got the V grooves down in the bottom. And I've got pocketing done here as well. Okay. So this is just unfinished on the top. But that's what the bottom would look like. Now, why would a, you know, why would a threshold be important? Well, at the end of the day, it may not be important. However, a very common call for us is, I need a threshold that's 11 inches wide. That's not something that's off the shelf. And many manufacturers, when you get past 8 inch, it starts to get difficult. You get past 10 inch, 
And it's not a single extrusion in general. In general, someone might say, yeah, it, it has to be it has to be 12 inch and nobody sells a lot of 12 inch saddle thresholds. If I've got a piece of four by eight half inch solid 6061 aluminum and I've got tool pathing that allows me to put serrations or V bits in the uh, V grooves in the bottom, do a surfacing or a, uh, a pocketing profile in the bottom, do ball grooves up in the top or V grooves in the top. Uh, and I can chamfer the outside edges and I can chamfer them at an ADA compliant two to one relationship. This is something that it will take me longer to draw it because of my currently, my current level of expertise over the uh, drawing aspect, which is not uh, excellent, but it gets better all the time. But once that's drawn, it's just a matter of loading the piece uh, into the tool. So the concept became, boy, it's going to, the CNC is going to help me make shelves. Okay, well, that's pretty pedestrian. And I thought, boy, custom thresholds. And then the idea becomes, well, what if somebody wants a custom threshold, but then in the top of it, I don't put flutes only. I engrave their company name in here or do some sort of particular design in the top. It's a three axis machine. And I've got the ability to have you know, eight different primary tool types and then different sizes and different shapes. Maybe a logo here, uh, maybe something special, or maybe somebody just needs something to ship very quickly. Well, the bottom line is if I've got the material, then if I have the aluminum, it's pretty easy. Let me show you a third thing, a third idea. Pardon me, it'd actually be a fourth idea. The shelving, the crate that I built, Custom thresholds, and now a fourth idea, which will extend the the uh, envelope of what we're discussing. Let's do that now. So in the spirit of speaking about how thinking changes, I have a client who emailed me um, about a need for a roof hatch and sent this photo. And I'm thinking, what does this have to do with a roof hatch? Well client says that they bought a roof hatch from us and want to use it here. And I'm looking at, you know, I, I understand the concept of what I'm looking at. I am reasonably comfortable reviewing a, uh, a technical drawing. And I'm, it looks to me as if there is some sort of a six foot diameter concrete tube missile silo or whatever it is, I don't really know. And the client was looking for this lid here. Well, I see some dimensions. I don't have particular dimensions. And the client asked if I could provide it. And I, going through the conversations, basically it was a, a situation where the client's looking for a piece of aluminum cover. And I start thinking, ah, okay, well, the first thing I, the first obvious problem is the potential diameter. Let's say it's, you know, 76 inch diameter. Well, I obviously can't cut that on a four by eight tool. So the first question I ask the client is, could we make it basically two half circles and then have them field weld it? And what I would do is take, you know, a piece that would be seven foot in length and then uh, you know, 42 inch in width and cut a tool path that would be half of a circle. And I would do it from the bottom where I could put this V groove on it, whatever that dimension needs to be. Uh, let's just say 60 inch, uh, cause it looks like it might actually be that. And my question to the client was, well, how thick does it need to be? And the client said three inch. Well, that's an extremely epic thick piece of aluminum. But I continued the mental exercise, you know, figured out that that piece of aluminum would be exceptionally heavy. I'm not even sure if my structure would be able to handle it. I don't know actually how I would easily maneuver it, even though it can be done. Um, and 
The client then asked me to provide some sort of an idea about this half circle, so I provided him the following. You know, just a, a, a rather simple sort of showing, you know, of a, of a half circle, and then showing what the profile would look like. You know, I, I would run a bit on that, and basically I would create a tool path that would stair-step this with an end mill, and then come back and do cleaning passes with the bit. The issue is it would be an exceptionally large diameter V-bit, and it would be three-quarter shank. The tool may, the shop bot may or may not be rigid enough to handle it. So while this is has not and will not be turning into a job, because what the client was actually looking for was a way to be able to take <laughs> have this manhole cover, this three inch thick, seven foot diameter manhole cover with lifting mechanisms. And the once I realized he wanted to take this and rotate it out, or or I should say, move it in an upwards direction like you would with a roof hatch cover, I realized, well, I, that's outside of my purview. But the, the, the thinking starts to change is just simply the bottom line. So now looking at a project like this, it went from custom shelves to um, custom thresholds to uh, well, a custom shelves and then a custom shipping crate, custom thresholds, and then a custom manhole cover. So it gets to a point where what else can be done? And taking the idea of the custom thresholds even further, I've bought a basically a buffing wheel that I'll be able to put into the spindle of the router and polish the top of this. So very so one concept leads to another concept is just simply the bottom line. Okay. Now let's take a look at uh Let's take, let's, let's move on with this video. Now let's take a look at the machine actually running. Let's just have it do some basic commands and we'll switch to that video. We'll move it around and then we will uh, talk about what's up next and what the future will be like, uh, will be for this CNC machine in terms of how I plan on implementing it. So let's do that now. Now, let's take a look at this tool running. So all I did was give it a command to move towards us, basically. Okay, let's do a little bit of a walk around the tool. And I would certainly encourage that you visit the ShopBot website. There's the control box. That is our Becker vacuum pump that's there on the ground. That allows us to hold the material down. Hold that up just a little bit there. What we have, and I'll show you uh, back at the other end of the tool, but near the back end we've got our Shop Fox dust collector that is a extremely capable and inexpensive dust collector. Its CFM is something in the range of about 1300 and I've looked around to see if there might be something better suited for it, but in the cost and CFM range, there really just isn't anything. Okay. Now, you can see the PVC piping down below. That is our control for the four zones. And we'll get up closer to the work area. What you're seeing here is this is just a piece of half-inch OSB, a 7 16 OSB. This is our spoil board here, and then our plenum is cut, our vacuum plenum is cut right into this component here. 
um, I should say down below here, and then our um, the top of that board is here. So it allows us to be able to hold that material down via vacuum. This this shouldn't be here. This is the spoil board, this piece of MDF that's here. The operator side of the tool is here. This is the side of the machine that is that is what is to be considered the side that you're working from. So X is here, that's X, then Y is in that direction. Okay, so really great, lots of fun uh, is what we're dealing with here. Okay, let's ask it to air cut something so we can actually see it move. And before we air cut anything, we've got to actually uh, zero the machine X, Y, and Z. So we're going to do that now. Otherwise, the machine will not know where it is. And we're, ho and we're homing the machine to the X and Y zero right now. It's basically finding where it belongs. Now it's homing the Y. It did the X first. So now it's homed at X and Y zero zero. Now I'm going to home the Z axis. I moved it out a little bit so I could home the z-axis. Home the z-axis. I wanted to move the dust skirt off, but it currently thinks the z is at five inches, which it certainly isn't. And I didn't want to move it to a point where it was going to forget where it was. So we've got our zeroing plate here. It's 121 thousandths of an inch. We've got our grounding clip here. And it's going to find its, its Z0 is what it is from the material surface is what this is. And the fact that it's just a spoil board on a spoil board just doesn't matter because all we're doing is telling it its position in space, its three axis dimension. So before I zeroed the Z, I moved it from zero, zero to eight, eight, because I wanted to move that back a little bit so I could zero it on the Z axis. So now it does have a zero position, and I'm gonna tell it to move home. So now its position is zero, zero, two, because the Z axis is at two inch. Now I'm gonna load a file, and we're just gonna watch it cut is what we're gonna do. What it's doing right now is literally cutting that routine to create the donuts, or so to speak, the shipping material crate uh, earlier. So right now it's cutting the exterior profile. And you can see how I would have had a piece of OSB on top of this. And you can see that I was cutting into the top or the surface of the material, which is evidence by cutting into it by about 20 thousandths of an inch. Now it's cutting the inside so that we're going to be left with the rest of the material, which I'll show you in a moment. So what I did was I called it air cutting, and all I'm doing is running the tool path, but I'm telling the Z axis to stay at our safe Z, which is 2 inch. And I'll show you that on the control software. So it's done with its cut, and now it's going to move to its uh, home position or rest position for the end of the cut. I told the tool path 
that I wanted it to stop at 48 and 24 so I could pull the sheet off and have the spindle out of the way of the work, okay? And here is our finished crate that I had mentioned earlier. Right here. Ready to go. So when we go to package this tomorrow, we'll just remove these screws. Now let me show you the control software. View of the rest of the workspace as we roll around. That's showing you its space. Right now it's at 48 Z up X, 24 Y, and 4 Z, because I had it at, um, I had it at a, two, a safe Z of 2, but it's moved up to 4 inch, uh, and I think that's because, I know that's because the tool path, I told it to position itself there. So that's the work area, and that's a basic cutting profile of the work. Okay. So what we'll do at this point is we'll just simply wrap up the video on camera and we'll talk about what's next. That is an introduction to our ShopBot CNC that we've brought in to help us continue to move forward with building out our new distribution center, not only cutting custom shelves, but helping us create packaging material, maybe custom thresholds, and then who knows what after that seven foot diameter, three inch thick aluminum manhole covers and whatever else. We had a client actually about two weeks ago look for asking us if we had 20 in stock of a exit device trim for a major manufacturer of exit devices. Well, this trim was nothing other than a mounting pad, a cylinder mounting pad. And if you're familiar with Jackson exit devices, their concealed vertical rod, take a cylinder mounting pad. It's a mortise cylinder that's threaded down onto nothing other than a piece of aluminum. It is chamfered or radiused on the top and bottom, but it was nothing other than a piece of aluminum that's been, however, milled, machined. Um, and I said to myself, boy, that's just a piece of aluminum, and I sure think I know of a tool that can cut it. Uh, and while it was a situation where we're not looking to make counterfeit parts for other people's exit devices, at the end of the day, it made me realize, boy, there's lots of things that we might be able to do with this machine. If you have any special requests, by the time you're seeing this video, I do anticipate the knowledge, the grasp, the command over the subject matter, drawing tool paths, understanding how the machine works, the ability to have tooling, the ability to have materials in-house to cut should be uh, somewhat well-formed, so please reach out to us, and thank you very much. Again, thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up, please subscribe, and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.